Yeah. Right, Colin, uh, tomorrow's the biggest uh, day of your coaching career. Yes, it is. Obviously a massive game for your club. Uh, what would it mean to win um, the state one? Oh, look, it's, it's a huge, huge event for the club. I mean, um, 50 years anniversary of when Caledonians won the, the cup against Olympia in South Over, 2-1. Um, the young Bernie Siggins played in that match, so he sort of shared his experiences with the playing group about the enormity of the game. It's one of the games that he actually still remembers to the day. Um, whether we remember tomorrow is is important, but I think win or lose, the, the players will remember this game for a long time. Are you feeling the, the pressure at all? Did this game? Oh, look, two years ago we, we set about at the club of working out where we want our senior group to go. Um, we sort of fell off track a little bit last year, but this year we're on track for that, and part of that was to, to be in the statewide cup final. Um, about winning it and, and moving it along. I mean, there's a there's a big reward there. I think um, that's the dream of the players, the coaching staff, and the club itself. And I guess there's a little bit of pressure eased when you when you're trying to make that dream come true. Um, yeah, we we just have the game as it comes. Really, I think the playing group's pretty relaxed. How much effort is the club pouring into in this game tomorrow? Oh, look, we, we rested players yesterday. We, we planned this um, as soon as we knew we were in the cup final. Um, yeah, so we've done as much as we can to, to, to prepare for it. So a very deliberate approach, uh, I guess, in the, in the lead up to this cup final. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah pretty much. We've, um, we've got some experienced coaches in the coaching team who have been at this, been involved in these games before. Um, so we sat down, worked out a plan of when we knew we were playing two games on the weekend as well, how we would manage the group. Um, we've got good depth this year, um, we believe that and they did a job for us yesterday and we hope, hope to have a win on uh, tomorrow. Is it difficult to, to back up just two days after having a game? Oh look, personally I think it's, it's, it is, um, 48 hours after a game to the players' muscles and that are still recovering from the actual game, the first game. So to have it sort of 48 hours, 50 hours after kickoff of the first game, um, would have been nice to have it re like the first game rescheduled, but that's what it is. We we plan around that. Your opponent is pretty handy since it's out Hobart. Um, obviously present a big challenge uh, to, to knock off the, the reigning State World Cup champion in the reigning Yeah, career. look, it's a good test. I mean, they've been the benchmark in the sport here in Tassie for, for a long time. Um, current champions won, won both the Kulu um, seasons to date. Um, had a good game yesterday. Some, got, got some really good players in their team, but I guess with you, you've got to go into a mentality of having no fear to play these teams if you want to compete um, you have to be positive. Um, we have nothing to lose tomorrow. So. Do, you, do you think South are more vulnerable now than they have been in the, in the past? I think their squad's definitely different to last year. Um, they sort of had a bit of an intimidation quality about them last year. I, I don't think that's there this year. Maybe because that's the inclusion of the younger players, I'm not sure. but. They've lost some key, key players in that group um, and I think it demonstrated to our guys when we played them at Darcy Street um, in our first round of the Victory League that uh, we can compete with them and uh, we're on track to win that game. Um, so we're looking forward to the game tomorrow. What do you feel you guys do better than South? Oh, look. Not a lot, probably. <laughs> Um, look, we like to play possession football, that's the style that we're changing um, and for that to be effective we like to attack as well. It's about scoring goals, putting goals well, in the uh, net. point of view, as uh, uh, Colin spoke about the past calendar 50 years ago, has that been spoken about much and do you take draw much on that going into tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Bernie did come in and have a chat to us after the, the, the training on Thursday and it was really moving. Um, uh, I mean, we're a team, I guess, that 
know, we, we actually won, was it 42 years ago or something like that? South Hobart won last year, I think. That says a lot. I think it says, you know, South Hobart have been a powerhouse, I guess, um, of, of the competition for the last n nearly a decade. And, and they have that pressure of being expected to win um, going into tomorrow's game. Um, whereas, I guess, we're, we're the gross underdogs and um, you, we can go in playing carefree football to a certain extent. And do you think you will sort of throw, throw everything out this game? Oh, definitely. There's nothing to lose. I mean, what, a, what an exciting um, competition it is to not only win silverware locally, but to, to then go into the FFA Cup would be unbelievable. Do you relish that underdog tag? Do you think you play better with the underdog tag? Definitely, yeah. Yep. Well, what is it about the underdog tag? I mean, it's here across all, all sports, I suppose, that gives teams a lift. Well, I guess it's the extra pressure of being a favourite. Um, you know, it may, it may play on, on the, some of the players' minds, from, for example, from the South Over. But for us, I guess we can go out there, just play as a team. I think it's something we're, we're doing really well this year is, is actually playing for each other. Um, and I think without that extra pressure, I think, yeah, yeah, I think we can do good things in this competition. Braden, uh, do you agree with that, uh, that you've got all, all the pressures on South Hobart, given you the, uh, the reigning champs and the favourites to win? No, I don't, I don't agree with that at all, to be honest. I think there's two teams in the cup final and they've both got pressure on to win the games. And the best team on the day will win. I think we go into that game, we don't see there's been any tags on either team. We see ourselves as a good chance if we play our best football to, uh, to win the game. But there's definitely no tags in our eyes and we don't see them as below us. We see them on par and we've got to go out there and do our job and win the game. How much of the benefit is that having the experience of this, this time? Well, I think, I think it makes it easier for our team, but then again, we've got a lot, a lot of younger players in the team that, you know, it's their first time in a cup final. But, um, you know, we've got a few players with experience in finals. I, I, me being one of them, obviously, last year I was involved in the cup win, so it does make it easier in, in the big games when you learn how to, how to perform and how to kill the nerves a bit. And, and turn it on on a big day and hopefully tomorrow we can go out and, and win our second in a row. Where do you think cup football differs from, from league football I suppose? Uh, well you know you, you lose you're, you're out I mean title it's, it's a it's a it's a long marathon it's not a sprint you've got to, got to win every you know continually build and win games and be consistent whereas in, in the cup you've got to got to win you've got to win there's no other alternative and we're going out tomorrow, oh, we have to win. We are, we'll put it all on the line and um, yeah, we'll be fighting for that game and making sure we come out with a trophy. How much of an incentive is that if they come Oh, massive. I mean, you want to be on the national stage. It's an unreal feeling. I know our boys who were involved last year against Sunderland was probably one of the best experiences they've had in, in football and, and some of their lives. So it's an unreal thing to be a part of and we want to be back there again this year. That loss to Tuggerum, does that still burn within the playing group? Massively, massively. We want, to, we want to go back into the FFA Cup and we want to put in poor performance. We want to progress and we want to, want to show that Tasmanian football and South Hobart are a team that can, you know, we're one of the best in, in the country and outside of the other league, obviously, and we want to turn on in the, big, in the big games and on the national stage. And I think if we get into the FFA Cup, we can do that. But we're focused on tomorrow's game and, and winning that. As you, how are you finding your own personal form at the moment? Are you happy with the touch you're in? Yeah, I, I feel in good form, you know, I've, I've probably not put away chances where I, I think I should have buried, but, you know, I'm still scoring goals in it, and I feel like I'm doing not just that for the team, I'm doing a lot of defensive work and putting a lot of pressure on opposing defences when they're trying to play out, but, yeah, I'm feeling fresh and I feel like I'm in good shape to really have a good game tomorrow and hopefully lead the boys to a victory. Braden, with Andy Brennan gone to an A-League club with Luke Bowles going to South Melbourne, why, why are you still here? That's, that's a good question, Walt. I can't really answer that, to be honest. But yeah, I, I, I've got no problems being here at South. I love this football club and, and I, I want to do a job for us this year. And if anything turns up after this year or some time, then, then it happens. But right now, I'm focused on our team and, and winning trophies with South Hobart. And, it, and it's an exciting thing this year. And obviously, tomorrow, it's a, it's a big game for me personally. And the boys are really up for it. And we uh, want to win the game and go into the FFA Cup. Is the FFA Cup getting, if you do, go through tomorrow, is that 
a massive audition when you're on the national stage? You have a lot of eyes on you. Oh, certainly. I, I think there's a few players last year in the FFA Cup who, who had good games against A League opposition and they got looked at and got trials from. So it's definitely a massive opportunity, and we've got a lot of real quality youngsters in our team that can really show what they're about. But like I said, we're focused on tomorrow's game. If we win that, then we're in the FFA Cup. So it's about winning tomorrow and turning it on. And we're not going to take Kimber lightly, they're a good team, but we know if we turn on and play at our best, we'll, we'll come out with a win. Kenny, how badly do you want to uh, win tomorrow to, to get through the FFA Cup in the time for last year? Well, this is the first time we've really thought about the game. Uh, you know, we had a big game yesterday. We had to overcome that hurdle and then move on. So our focus now is purely and simply on winning the match tomorrow against Kingborough. And we know how difficult it's going to be. But yes, we want to represent Tasmania. So I hope I want to be in the round of 32 in the FFA Cup. So it's a massive step for us. And you know, my job really is convincing young players what a big step this is. Uh, what can happen when they make that step into that top level football, opportunities are there for everyone. So it's a massive move for it. Ken, you're in danger of falling between two stools this weekend, but you got a point yesterday, so you must be pretty satisfied. I think so. Um, you know, we go into every game to win, we don't go and look for a draw. Um, and really, uh, the only the last five, seven minutes at the end of the game, we came under a bit of pressure and we got a bit deep. But other than that, I thought we were pretty much playing in attack, we were moving forward, we created good opportunities. So I was really pleased with the performance. And the results are okay, 1-1 one, one away from home, we'll take that. How, how are you feeling about playing another match just, just two days later? I agree with Colin, it, it's a bit difficult on part-time players and maybe this round of the Victory League should have been, or our game should have been cancelled. Uh, but we, we move on, we accept it and we move on. We're, we're, we are used to, because it's happened to us before, we have a little routine, the players are actually having a recovery now, uh, they'll have a massage later in the afternoon and a light training run, so our preparation will be thorough. How dangerous a prospect are Kingborough Collins obviously just said they're throwing everything at, at this game, resting players and, and whatnot. Is that a dangerous proposition for you guys? I think they're a good side. Uh, they have key players, uh, quality players, uh, they play over the flanks, they're very good down the flanks. Um, Jack Turner, he got sent off in the last game against us, but he's a super player, great athlete as well. Um, and all around, they're a well organised side. But I think South Hobart, maybe people underestimate South Hobart a little bit. We are still a good side. We'll still play a high tempo, high intensity game. and. Uh, We'll do well on the day, I'm sure. Do you feel you have been underestimated a bit this year, given you haven't been as, as, as super dominant as you have in the last few years? Well, I, I think so. When you lose players of the quality that we've lost, it, you know, the, the troops were a little bit thin. But we've recruited well, and our youngsters are they're special players. They're really good players. And uh, I'm sure, give them another year, they'll develop better and stronger, and we'll be a force again. So we're in a bit of a rebuilding phase. but. We're not rebuilding a lot. We, we still want to stay up there and be challenging for everything. It wasn't tempting at all to, to rest some guys uh, yesterday. They put them 100% for tomorrow. We rested three, but they're not playing tomorrow. <laughs> no, it's difficult, you know. We, we have 24, 25 players probably, but when you've got seven or eight major injuries, then it's difficult. So we couldn't rest anyone in particular. Um, you know, Benny obviously is out. Cammy Rogers is definitely out. Um, so they're big players missing the game. They'll be start tomorrow? Uh, he'll be in the squad, I think. He's one that'll be training later today just to see where we are. But I would think he'll be in the squad, definitely. Ken, have you tried to get Jack Turner this season? Us? Yeah. Jack's a Kingborough player. Not for South Hobart player, Kingborough. If he came on the market, if he was a player that uh, was up for moving, we'd be interested in definitely. Mm -hmm. There's a few we'd be interested in, but we haven't gone around poaching any players. I mean, it's difficult to do in Tasmania. Um, I have spoken to Jack a few times and his father over the last six months, um, but he's always been a guy that's been happy at Kingborough over the last couple of years. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.
how, um, how important is that effort make up the spot for, I guess, you know, the, the team on the national stage? I went over to watch uh, South Melbourne and uh, Melbourne Knights on Friday night. And you see the passion of those two big clubs and the fans and the supporters and the players um, and then you realise how, how important it is for Little South Hobart or Kingborough representing them. It, it's huge. The South, South Melbourne even made the back page of the Hurl or the pages in the Hurl. Unheard of. And that's the power of this FFA Cup. So it's an immense tournament with unbelievable coverage, uh, you know, media coverage there. Which puts great pressure on the players and the coaching staff because that, that side of it's new, it's massive. So, it, and you've got to handle all of that. The difficult questions that Walter and Chris put at this. <laughs> <laughs> does that does that lead to you know more money for the club sponsors? Uh, obviously, you want to get on board, you know, back pages and all that. I, I think sponsorship, yes. Uh, we don't get more money. I mean, we lost money with the Tugrenong game because of the security and everything else that year need to fork out, but um, yes, yeah, sponsorship wise, publicity wise, it's just unbelievable for, for the club and for, for players. Uh, I think one of the biggest things is for the young players, they do get spotted. I mean, we probably have four, four players now on our books that will leave at the end of the year to bigger and better things. Yeah. And you know, it all comes from the profile of that effort. I might, is it Malian Pomata? He was at the South Melbourne game. And all he talked about, I'll be there on Monday to see South Hobart and Kingborough. You know, that, they're even excited to, um, to be covering this game, South Hobart and Kingborough. Because in the Tuggeranong game, the publicity and the slice of cheese that came out of that, it was immense for them, those people. Better than some of the mm. NPL clubs. Yeah. Ken, do you think say, Tasmanian winners should be assured of a home game in the next round? Well, if it's us, I think we're hoping to get an away game so we have a trip this year. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, I don't think so. I, you know, I, I think what is unfair, I think maybe both Kingborough and South Hobart should be in. The, you know, the two finalists should go in because they promote four from Adelaide, four from Victoria, four or six from New South Wales. So, you know, I, I think that would be a fair uh, way of doing it. Two teams from Tassie, why not? Very good. All right, boys. Thank you.